was it was an interesting time that because when rugby was amateur, of course we had to make a living um, and earn money so we could put bread on the table, so to speak. And I mean, I was getting up at five o'clock. I was getting in the car. I went to the, the club's gym. I played at Leicester Tigers at the time. Um, had keys to the gym. Let myself in. So I'd do about an hour and a half in the morning. I'd then have a shower, go to work. Luckily, I worked um, fairly close to the track. And um, at lunchtime, I was given, I was allowed an hour and a quarter. So literally every lunchtime, I'd, I'd finish work at about one o'clock. I'd, I'd drive down to the track. I'd do a speed session with my, my coach. Then I'd go back to work, work all afternoon, finish work about six o'clock. And then I'd go to the club and train. I mean, that was it, five days a week. And then on Sunday, obviously Saturday we'd play, and then Sunday was um, was kind of um, just getting over the over the game from the Saturday. And that obviously was was what it was like when it when it was amateur. So I mean, literally five o'clock till ten o'clock, four or five days a week, just completely rammed with with that sort of commitment to to rugby. And the job really was incidental. It was just really because we had to work. Didn't really want to work. Just wanted to play rugby. But then of course when rugby went professional. I was really lucky because I was at arguably one of the richest clubs in the world at the time. And, you know, Leic Leicester were pretty generous to, to begin with, so we, we were on pretty decent contracts. And, I mean, literally within about six weeks, most of us um, give up our jobs. The only guy that didn't give up his job was a guy called Rory Underwood. And Rory couldn't give his job up because he was um, a fighter pilot in the RF. So he wasn't able to do it, but pretty much everyone, everyone, everyone else packed up the jobs. And what was really interesting is, well, going from five o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night, all of a sudden I went from that to literally two or three hours at the most per day. And for me, that was just, I'm, th I'm thinking, God, I've got to do something with my time. I've got to fill those, those hours. And I was 27 at the time, so I thought, look, I've probably got three or four years left if I'm lucky as a pro. I started playing senior rugby when I was 16, so I'd been in the game quite a long time. So I thought, well, what, what do I do? I thought, well, look, if I've only got three or four years, I need to set up my own business. And I'd been relatively successful as a sales and marketing manager for a large commercial insurance broker in Leicester at the time. So I thought, well, that's what I'll do. I'm, I'm half decent at sales and marketing. I'll set up my own marketing company, which of course I did. And that was back in 1995, November 1995. And the plan was build a company while I was playing rugby. And then hopefully when I retired, it could sort of seamlessly transition from professional rugby player to business owner. And actually, it kind of worked out pretty well. So I had a, a, a fairly bad groin injury called Gilmore's groin, which kind of curtailed my career. And I was 31 at the time. And I, and I literally, I said to my wife, I said, look, I think it's, it's time to retire. She was pretty pleased, I think, because of all the injuries started coming. And, and she said, well, okay, great. Um, the business is, is going well, great. So it literally, the transition was, was great for me. And it's something that obviously, this day and age, the guys don't have that really because you know they're full-on professionals, and it doesn't matter what sport is it really because they they train hard, they work hard. It's twenty-four-seven job really being a professional sportsman, and uh, they don't really have time now to, to do what I what I did. And so most people retire, and then it's like, cranky, what do I do now? Those that are a little bit more savvy will will prepare a bit like I did, but I think a lot of people get to a point where it's like. Crikey, I've, I've finished as a, as a professional athlete, what do I do now? Particularly those that get a bad injury that obviously just comes out of the blue, then you've got no chance to plan, which I feel for those guys and girls. But I think generally speaking, I, I was a, in a fortunate position because I played the amateur sport and I played as a professional. And none of the guys now will ever have that experience.